looks like we're ready. Let's hop into game number two between B and Adi as we take to Hillendale. Spawning in on the left side of the map, it is B playing as the Chinese in blue, and to the right side, it is Don Adi playing as the Delhi Sultanate in red, opening up with that mosque right away. Whereas on the other side, B is just going to drop that standard Mel. Very standard openings from both players over here. But as we discussed before this game, the wild card is how B is going to approach this game. Because we all know what the Delhi wants to do in this game. The question is how B's Chinese will be able to react to that. Well, one interesting thing, I mean, you, you know, you're, you're an astute watch of Age Vampires. You've seen this as much as I have. Is like these type of civs such as England, China, something they do occasionally like to do is outpost rush on Hill and Dale, which saying that just a month ago seems crazy. But with what I've been seeing in the most recent weeks, that, that seems like a feasible opening, especially for a player like B. Indeed. In fact, B did this just a couple of days ago at M4C, went for a Chinese tower rush. And that was actually one of the most effective tower rushes I've ever seen. So he started off with the Barbican of the Sun, dropped it with like eight villagers, making it next to impossible for the opponent to stop it. Mm -hmm. And then he just kept on pressing with the towers, get the hand cannon slits going. And this is where we have to consider how powerful a Chinese tower rush is. Because not only are you going to have hand cannon slits on your towers instead of arrow slits, you also build those buildings really fast. So it's difficult to stop you from building those towers and then the towers that you build are just very well fortified and very powerful it's very subtle but when you think about it it, it could be fair to say that like china could be the best tower rushing civ in the game because because think about it right the supervise gives you the benefits of like what the Rus has and a lot of people would theorize that say Rus had the ability to um pay 100 wood for outposts instead of 175 they would actually be the tower rushing civ in the game right now because they're able to afford to flow additional resource. Add in the fact that the villagers build twice the speed as China. It, it just makes sense that if any civ is going to frequently tower rush, it feels like this is the one to do it. And that's why you'll see Adi is instantly looking to warm himself in. He's not going to fall for it. He was watching that series. He probably saw what B was able to do on an open map against a similar civ because I believe that was up against, uh, was it Mister who was playing as the Abyssus that he done it against? Yeah, it was an Abbasid pick. So yeah. in that case, it was an Abbasid two town center boom. Um, whereas in here, it is likely going to be an expansion. But I feel like B has already gotten the value. Just the sort of frighten factor of this Chinese tower rush is enough to force Donari to make walls. And while the walls aren't particularly expensive, it forces you to send out villagers to multiple directions, which means that these villagers are currently not gathering resources, forces you to invest into walls. And there's a legitimate chance that B wasn't even thinking about the tower rush. So just the possibility of that tower rush being there is enough for B to make Don Ari start to wall off. Stuart assessment, my friend. Another interesting kind of ripple effect is like usually like the way Delhi kind of leverages this walling off. Like I, another reason I thought Delhi was so good in this, this walling heavy meta at the moment is their ability to build them with, with the military units, right? But notice Artie still hasn't dropped a single military building because he doesn't know what B is going to do. And if he went for, say, Spearman early on, then you run the risk that B just pulls out Zhugnu in the Feudal Age, right? I, I guess that's his scare factor right now. And it means that the B is just kind of reading him left, right, and center at the moment. You see, he was coming with a villager as well. He's going to try to burn through the Palisades, and he will eventually get through it, but this will allow enough time for Artie to respond, and he will need to. Indeed. One of the scouts for B are trapped inside, but that actually makes it difficult for Donari to just repair these walls because that scout can start killing a villager that's repairing. I wonder what that one villager was up to for B because if he really wants to go aggressive, okay, there come the boys. There come the boys. They're coming in for that Barbican of the Sun drop. And honestly, even if you can't get through these walls, just placing the Barbican of the Sun over here might be enough. Donati retaliates by killing at least four sheep out there. He's like... Okay, you're not getting those sheep away. He's trying to right-click the other sheep, but it's a little difficult with that carcass lying around already. And B, B hasn't... Oh my god, he hasn't noticed. There's, there's, a, there's a little lady sitting underneath his horse right now, just going <laughs> away at heart's content with a hammer. Like, he doesn't notice. Don't tell him right now. B still hasn't spotted this, so he's never getting through the wall. And instead, his scout is getting sniped. Nice move up coming in from Don Art. He's able to deny some sheep on the other side as well. And it looks like, yep, there's that barbecue you're talking about. It will stop the extension on the secondary berry bush line. And this isn't the end of the world for B, folks. This is actually a nice move. Like, this is the same thing that kind of we've seen Roost players do when they try an outpost rush. If you have this type of landmark, it's a staging point, right? And you build out a network of towers from there. 
and it cuts off Donari from the, well, the shortest path to the middle. So it makes it much more difficult for Donari to get there. You see Donari has to make a second layer of walls out here. And what I love about this Barbican of the Sun is that it's also protecting a ton of resources. So you don't really have to venture far away with your villagers because you can just drop off whichever drop off building you need. He's dropping a lumber camp, but he could might as well take the berries. He could take the gold or the stone. So he doesn't need to go back or very far away with the villagers to get his eco going he can just use this as you said as a staging ground and something that still protects his forward wills mm -hmm. there's definitely some downsides right like one thing to keep in mind is as he gets all of his imperial officials out this is nine villages that aren't going to get a 20 percent increase drop off but considering this gives him that option that flexibility to continue being aggressive where other civs would be like okay i'm just going to run this village back to base so i'm going to make him wall up on the side like this is at least adding something to your economy and that's going to allow this. You can see he's going to drop the stable right outside Artie's base. Gotta love that. I wonder if he will actually send an Imperial officer forward because you could actually justify doing that so that you can supervise the slumber camp or the stable. Don Artie did lose a villager as he was trying to build those walls. The second layer of walls is actually within the range of that Barbican of the Sun. And the Barbican isn't messing around. It's 25 damage on that hand cannon slit. So it's not like an arrow coming out of that. It's a lot more dangerous. So Donati is going to have to add another layer behind that. Quite a lot of investment here for Donati, but he's got a stable up with a scholar inside. So he's ready to supervise it. And I get the feel that given the fact that B's base is wide open and there is no army back at home, the best thing Donati could do is sneak out on the south and then just launch a counterattack with those horsemen. Well, we'll see if it works out. I mean, like you said, Artie has essentially made the Palisade version of crop circles here, so it will take B a little bit of a while to navigate it. I mean, he's still trying to burn through in the meantime, but you know, he's not going to be the only one rushing these horsemen. You can see it's prepped now, and the Imperial official did come out, like you said. It isn't monitoring that just yet. I think he's actually watching the Lumber Camp until it, B's got enough surplus to actually push out the horsemen at that rate. But once he's ready, this is going to escalate quickly. And considering he already has his army building on the front line, he can actually strike quicker than Artie. And we are seeing walls being dropped. Once again, yep. Chinese villagers building fast helps a lot. Yeah, he's shifting to the south now. One villager going down there. In the meantime, going to set up a outpost network on the north. Two outposts, in fact. Wow. I, I, I mean, this is definitely one of the weirdest outposts I've seen, at least in the last week here, Lidical. <laughs> But it looks like Artie's building it, if anything. I mean, I don't know how that's going to work vision-wise, but an interesting move by B. At least it gives him that, that kind of outpost crawl, right? So he's got those retreat points to protect them. Indeed. And that's going to give safety to those villagers as well. So now that the horsemen are coming out on the south, he's going to need that. One villager gets picked off by Don Artie. He's going to stop Ooh. those walls. And this is going to be a crucial moment in this game because he's cut off from the northern exit. He's cut off from the central exit. But the south is still open, and that's going to be extremely important for him at this point as he's popping out the archers to support those horsemen. And can we just uh, can we just check the, the bee's vision on the, on the north side here and um, question how line of sight works in Age of Empires? <laughs> I don't know, if, <laughs> don't know if you noticed, but this outpost sees everything. And it's going to see the villagers coming. He hasn't got the hand cannon upgrade yet, and these villagers are going to be too late, so they will back away in time. But it looks like B is in Artie's base. And then you have to wonder, is Artie going to try to set up a second wall of Palisades? Or is he just going to try and shift left, right, and center and dodge this? The problem here for Don Artie is that now he has to start moving out for the Sacred Sites and protect that Scholar. However, there is now a Tower Rush inside uh -oh. his base because B is not giving up on this one. And the Hand Cannon Slit Towers at the bottom of this valley will be able to cover the bottom of this new tower. So... <laughs> this setup over here actually helps a lot for B. Secure this tower that's built on this hilltop. Once again, now I'm not only questioning line of sight, I'm I'm questioning how guns work in the Age of Empires universe. As, yeah, this hand cannon's going to be able to fire up here. Horseman outnumbered from B. Artie's going to attack him. There's going to be a garrison come out. Hand cannon upgrades underway as it stands. And it looks like more villagers are coming forth for B. He's going to peel it off. And I like the way he's wasting Artie's time. Artie, I don't think he's even realized he's being shot by the cannons. He won't finally turn around to address the outpost, but because he peeled a few of these horsemen off the side, he's going to lose troops and it's going to allow B to give himself a secondary rally point to push back in from. Beautiful micro from B, jumping outside the tower, getting some repairs going while Donardi wasn't looking, and then jumping back in. Great micro over there, and as you said, those hand cannon slits are working so well. In fact, fortification is coming in here for B, although this is going to be oh. a little too late. Villagers, oh, villagers making a run for it, though. 
They're going to get away as well. They're going to move back towards the outpost. And look, B's going to try to keep pushing him back, buffering the hitboxes to allow the villagers to get away to the safety of the other outpost. And this is where Artie may have to think twice about continuing to zerg towards this choke point. Turns around on the outpost. We'll try to burn that one down. But once again, these hand cannons, they're pew pewing away. You can see Artie, the count's going down. At one point, he had 13 or 14, now down to just eight horsemen left. And we'll back away. Don already managed to secure a sacred site for himself at the south, though, using the archers to build some walls. So he's going to have some passive gold income here. But I guess crisis averted here for B because at least he's limiting the control of the sacred site to just one here for Donari. He's coming in with the Imperial Academy as we speak. Mm. So he's going to get up to Song Dynasty, which could, as you said, open up the way for Ju the Juganu once Spearman hits the field for Donari, if Spearman hits the field against all those horsemen. Yeah, and actually, if he did go to Juke New, the problem is Artie didn't get a blacksmith. He didn't go for an early blacksmith. Instead, he's getting archers out in the field. And I don't, I don't know, is this the way, Lita? Like, going into archers in this situation when you're only facing horsemen seems a, a little bit dicey. I think he's expecting Spearman. He's preemptively going against the Spearman, but B is just resilient. He's saying, okay, I'm just going to play with horsemen. And seeing the archers, that's the right thing to do. Gotta love the move from Donardi to pull some scholars to try and heal up his forces. Because losing those horsemen would be an expensive thing over here. Another oh. tower being attempted. But you're seeing those fortifications appear on the towers of B. Making it much more difficult for Donar to get rid of those. Absolutely. And uh, it's just going to sidestep and outpost the right instead of the left this time. He's going to continue to extend that network. And the longer the Artie drags this out, the worse it's going to get. One villager gets sniped. Three more do get in the outpost in time. But with this horseman count against him, it's not easy to even just turn around and double down the outpost. He's going to try for it now, and B is going to be forced to fight. He's going to shift in. Outpost upgrade is going to come out, though. And now it's a little bit heftier to get through. Arch is not really making that much of a difference. The horseman count is actually starting to go against Artie. The hand cannon slits are adding up, and look how quickly the horses have fallen. All of a sudden, I think Artie needs to cut run. Up. Oh my god, yeah, the they both got sniped. Up by the tower as well, and this is a great staging point in this battle. <laughs> I mean, he just keeps doubling down. Artie feels like he has no choice. But look how long it now takes to get through this outpost. Another Scholar on the front. He might get sniped down soon. Yep, he's being targeted now. As the Pew Pew Fire is going to come out. Horsemen are going to engage once again. And I just feel like Artie's oh, stuck here. He has no choice. He knows he's slowly losing this battle. But if he doesn't get rid of this outpost, he feels like he might as well just lights out. He needs to get rid of this outpost because there is two more outposts under construction. So the moment he disengages from this battle, B is going to have two more towers up there oh, with those B fortifications. I, I, I think B just commits now, right? Like, if you drag him this deep, I don't think Hardy can hold. I mean, he's chasing him back for the moment, but it feels like he's baiting him out because if he wraps around and goes back to the skulls, the skulls are being sniped again. This is the problem that Artie, he keeps getting dragged away. He just needs to double down on this tower, but he's so paranoid about the horsemen stabbing in the back. And now he's going to sacrifice the archers as well. Finally, the outpost is on fire. But the moment you pull these horsemen too far away, B is just going to jump out and repair this. Indeed, here he comes with the repairs, and that's exactly what he needs to do. It takes so much time to damage that tower, so just two or three <gasps> seconds of repairs is enough to bait by time. The wall! Artie, he built the wall with the oh. archers! He denies him! B's stuck now. He's finally done it. He snuck it out. He makes it work to his advantage. And all of a sudden, B cannot keep up the aggression. This time, the outpost will fall. Archers were sacrificed to do this. But by pulling all those archers up north, he was able to build the walls. And really, this is the Delhi being able to save the day over here. He's got to be careful, though, because another scholar could go down. Indeed, a second scholar gets taken down. How and you've got to wonder though? if this was fine for B or not. Because he is going to lose those free wills. But boy, oh boy, uh -huh. was he inflicting a lot of damage. Well, just look at look at the eco situation, right? Like, how much surplus gold B's got? Wood as well, because he cancelled two of those towers that weren't even attacked. So, you know, he's still healthy there. It looks like, actually, if anything, B's going to be able to tap a castle edge quicker than Artie if he's not careful. He needs to recover the food right now, which is what he's working on. But B, what's happening with his numbers? There it is. I wondered. He must be switching. He's switching across to the deer and the farmland now, but this will ramp him up. And after all that, if we look at the eco count now, B, one villager ahead, that will continue to escalate because he is up in the Song Dynasty. And what's even bigger over here is that B managed to finish the walls on the south while Don Artie was distracted. And now he's getting some stone walls going, which would leave 26 villagers oh from Don Artie stranded out there. They're stuck now. And yeah, well, they're stranded. You've still got stables in the field. He could push out horsemen. And th yeah, that's the only choice Artie has. Look, he's going to wall himself in. 
It's just anything you can will like in World 2. It's going to be a blue, a red, and a blue, and a red. It's a nice little pattern on the map as we just see them trying to one-up each other every turn with the walls on the south. The thing is that you can't take down those stone walls, though. Nope. So as much as those foundations are established, nothing that Donati has takes down stone walls. It's completely irrelevant that he kills the villager because until he grabs some siege for himself, those stone walls cannot be taken down. So he's going to wall himself off. Unless the horsemen come in there in oh, time. Oh, the quick wall in. Oh, he's going to protect himself. He locks himself in just in time. Now, after all that, the other important thing you say about Siege, let's remember that Ardy still does not have a blacksmith. So he isn't going to have that option. He can't go into a, a ram quickly just to get through these cheap 350 health walls. He's kind of stuck for a while. But it looks like he's prepping himself. He's taking up as we speak. It's going to be compound of the defender. He wants to address a nip in the bud directly this defensive spamming element to outposts uh, and a B strategy, right? Like he wants to be able to actually do exactly what B's been doing to him for the last 15 minutes. Both players are on the way to Castle H here, but that's a big win for the Chinese because the Chinese is the civilization that usually gets beaten to Castle over here by the Delhi. Sacred Site will be neutralized down south. And now B would actually have the option to potentially chop through the forest at the bottom or even in mm. the central crossing. If you think about that, chop down two trees and you're yeah. right in the opponent's base. Compound of the Defender completed right now for Donati. B is a tiny bit behind, but B is going to have Stone Wars on the north, Stone Wars on the south, and oh there is nothing that prevents him from doing Stone Wars in the middle as well. I mean, it's going to be a double stable drop. So we're getting into the Lancer territory. And, and the interesting thing is, I don't know if B suspects his opponent went Compound Defender and that's why he's doing this, or if there's another move to it. But because... Ardy has gone for combat the defender. His lances aren't going to be better. Like, you know, he's not going to be able to juice them up. There's no honed blades on the table in this situation. And you can start supervising the blacksmith for upgrades as we are seeing B doing that. And once he's done with the upgrades, he's going to supervise the stables for production. Fast Monastery coming in here. He wants to leverage the fact that he has all the map under his control. So this is five relics easily available for him, which will be exceptional for the Chinese if the game goes very long because he will benefit more from the relics once we get to the Pagoda stage. But even just in Castle Age, being able to pick up four or five relics like this is a huge win here for B. Absolutely. I, I'd love to see him supervise the monastery as well. It's something we don't see so frequently, but you, you can do it, right? You just juice up that monk speed and you get out with free and instantly grab those relics all that much quicker. But it's kind of crazy to say in a, in a game that is non-religious versus religious Civ, one of those civs completely revolves around that religion element. Like, Ardy at all stages, the maximum he's had in this game is one sacred site. How frequently in the current meta are you able to say that about a Delhi player? And we've talked about this before the game. The Delhi is one of the most powerful civilizations in the game right now. One of the highest win rates out there. Whereas Chinese is always the underdog civ. In fact, it's usually the civ that doesn't get picked. So if B is able to pull off a win here with the Chinese over the Delhi, that's going to be important for two reasons. Number one, he would secure game number two for himself, making him 2-0 against his opponent. But what's more important is that he would use the Chinese to take away one of the strongest civs in the game from the opponent. I just love watching B do this quite awkward walling around his landmark <laughs> to just try and pin his opponent in. He uh, can't place it elsewhere. Yep. Like the berries, the Barbican of the Sun, and all yep. the walls, they just prevent him from placing it. So he has to build the big wall because there is no other alternatives. He wants to wall this crossing, but the berries just block the way. Well, well, luckily the monk was coming out as well. Otherwise, the relic would have also prevented him from putting down the wall. So he Ooh. does pin him in in the end. And that's full stone walling. Just needs Look to address on the, the elephant. <gasps> the elephant from Dora, oh, that's a big brain move is. out there. He doesn't have siege, but the elephant can break down stone walls. On the left side, the Lancers are about to come in, and you gotta save those wheels here for Donati. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a Disney story right now. Dumbo just saved the day, and it looks like Artie, he has a way out. He hasn't taken it just yet. B might just ride in, but it seems like B, the senses are tingling. He's like, something's not right about this. I saw the elephant breaking through because he's getting vision of the stone walls. He feels like it's a little bit too free to run in here, and as a result, he's gonna back away. I think he could have afforded running in. I generally think that he could have done that. There's 25 wheels out there for a price of four or five Lancers and a couple of horsemen. If you can take down 10, 15 out of those, that's a gigantic win. Villager count is slightly in his favor. So I guess he's just playing safe, wants to make sure that he doesn't do anything terrible. And do I see a trebuchet? I do. Donati is starting to shout that the uh, Barbican of the Sun in the middle area. 
Oh, yeah. We're starting to see Trebs emerge more and more in the meta. I think the way of the Hutton is is it just is impossible to reach them, right? That, that's usually the big issue. Even more so when Stonewalls start to come and play on both sides. Because when it's Palisades, at least, the Springwall could snipe this still. But when it's Stonewalls, all of a sudden, it's impossible to address. But for the moment, B is going to march forward with the Lancers. He also does have one or two Villagers here, so he could sustain the life of the Barbican's son. But instead, that Villager is going to prioritize that tree. It's choppy choppy time. Up chop indeed. However, the numbers aren't there for B. He's got 17 oh army. Instead, he's moving in towards the middle. He's chopping through both in the south and the middle area. Yeah, yeah. Look where Adi is as well. Adi is completely out of position. He shifted full south. B is aware of this. He's going to ride in. And he's going to be free to reign supreme in Artie's own base. He can even butcher the village if he chooses. Trebuchet's already down. Onto the gold line. He snipes out several villages instantly here. There's no way they get away. And Artie, fully out of position, can still not react to this. He's just addressing the village on the south side. But instead, he's being punished in his own base. Well, hello. B's committing. Uh, decides twice against it. That was a little bit finicky at the end there. And that does mean that there's going to be a relic banked for Artie. But still, slow to move back with these crossbowmen and lances. And B still does have the number advantage in this initial fight. He is going to lose those Lancers to the Crossbowman eventually, but the value that he has gotten is insane. And there was also Sneaky Villager by B gotten into the base of Donati. It's sneaking at the back. So <laughs> a lot of distraction was caused by B, and I love the move that he sent Villagers to the south because Donati was like, oh shoot, he wants to chop in at the south. So he sent all his army there, only to realize that the chop through happened in the middle area. So that diversion from B really facilitated this attack in the middle. And as I said, there's a sneaky villain here that could just hide some military buildings in the far right corner. Yeah, but he's not. Look, look, wait, he's, he's going south. He's like, I didn't sign up for this. I've got a family. I just want to go see them. <laughs> no, it's drop an outpost. Yeah, on the south side. <laughs> Oh, all this. All, like, how has he ran this marathon? On, no way. No way Artie still doesn't notice this. There's, there's just no way. Like, okay, B's going to catch... What? It's like B doesn't think he's getting away with this. It's like, oh, no. He knows. He knows. He's, he doesn't see you. He still doesn't see you. Oh, oh the big great move would be a stone wall. And oh, he's coming he's for it. it. The stone wall. And, and Artie doesn't know. That was just the pathfinding. As they shifted, he still haven't reacted. He's quick walling. Surely, surely Artie sees this. There's no way. There's no way B gets it all down. He's denied him. First crossbow's through. But the second one, so he can cancel. He lets him through, though. He's going to wall it afterwards. However, that is a lot of troops in the field for Artie. And he realizes right oh. at the last piece and turns around. Oh, only in a game with B. This is, I mean, <laughs> what else did we expect when we tuned in for this lad? Oh, man. I mean, that was a must-have for Donari because just imagine what would have happened if he realizes that, hey, there's a random stonewall in the middle of my base. Now, in all fairness, he's got double the army as B, so B mm -hmm. still has to be careful here because no matter how much cheese you deliver here, Ooh. you have to respect the fact that Delhi is slowly gaining power and we're seeing elephants, we're seeing mangonels, we're seeing crossbows appear on the battlefield, and suddenly B is the one... That's lacking map control, currently switching to palace guards, but those won't fare that well against the crossbows, so you're gonna have a couple of nest of bees in here for him. He's got four relics, he has controlled the map for a long time, so I think he's gotten the most out of the situation. Yeah. But we also have to respect the fact that now he needs to start adding army like crazy, because suddenly he could find himself outnumbered and just overpowered by the Delhi masses. You really can't underestimate the power of these palace guard, though. Like you said, they do get countered by the cross moment. The difference between these amount of arms is how much quicker they move. We're going to see him now as they engage. It's crossbow versus palace guard. Who do you think is going to take this? Who's actually going to notice first? It's actually going to be Artie. Turns around, starts sniping, but B doesn't care. He's just beelining for the base again. He's heading in. He sees the trebuchets. He sees everything he wants to take, and he's going to actually strike at a vulnerable time as Artie is currently building a secondary TC. And Donati can't just pursue. He has to go the long way around because oh that's the God. only way outside his base. And the palace guards will just march in there. That Stonewall is doing two things. It's preventing Donati from getting to the middle and it's also preventing him from getting back into his base. Palace guards with the high movement speed will also be much better pursuing villagers than men at arms would be. And you love the way he's spreading out those forces, oh going for the God. town center, going for the trebuchets and going for the lumberjacks. Hey, it's Black Ops operation right there. Just splits up. Delta team take the left. Brother team take the right. Butcher time, boys. 
Now, the good news, RE does have textiles, so it's not going to be maximum impact for B. But B is going to shut off the entire economy. And look at the eco count right now. B has a 30 eco lead over RT. And just look at that. All the crossbows had to be pulled back over here. That narrow choke point oh is God, also a great gone. position to fight for B. Look at He's just denying the whole army. They can't move through. And it looks like oh, he's had enough. He'll use the trebuchets to get rid of the half-completed stone walls. But that delay gives so much additional time for B to just party in the Delhi base. And he parties all night. And look, and look, look how ghost town it is right now. Like, uh, Lydical, yeah, have, you, have, you played, have you played Call of Duty 4? No. You know what? All right. There's a good saying in that. 20,000 people used to live here. Now it's a ghost town. This is it. Right here. Finally, a few villagers will move out. But you really just feel like it's stray dogs. And maybe radioactive creatures if you played Stalker that live in this place. Because I don't see villagers working anywhere. Not at all. We had zero villagers on food for a long time. And now, congratulations, you managed to clean this up. But all your crossbows are inside. And look at how exposed the left side is now. So suddenly, B can play this game where he's pushing the middle, forcing the opponent back. And the moment all that army goes oh. back, he can just strike at the left side. And it's just going to be wave after wave of palace guards. And <laughs> behind this one... Again. He's going to get uh, the wave. You're right. There's another wave coming out, and he is going south. I mean, he's reading your mind, Lydicor. He's like, yep, I've got the Lydicor playbook right here. I know exactly what I need to do. Oh, my. And you know what the crazy part is, my friend? This is before we even start thinking about Cheeky Yuan Dynasty, when these do become two-legged cavalry units. Absolutely. Uh, in fact... This is before we start thinking about Yuan Dynasty and the opportunity to potentially go for a couple of Fire Lancers to make it easier to burn through those walls because we're getting to that stage. Looks like B just wants to decap that sacred site, but as we discussed, at the south, it is just a smorgasbord of slaughter for all those villagers and the wood and the farms. <laughs> in the meantime, Adi is going to rebuild some Palisade defenses in the center. At some point, you have to question why no stone walls, though. He does have that option, remember, folks. Like, he could be building these out in the field, but it just feels like Adi is really limited in terms of his stone production. And he's going for a third TC, so he's looking to fully recover. The question, however, is going to be whether he'll be able to move out of his base once he has amassed that eco count. And the next wave is coming in here from B because the crossbows will be able to deal with all those palace guards. It's not even a question. Uh -huh. However, what happens when you have six nest of bees coming in there and Donati's army is mostly mangonels? That's not going to work that well against all of those nest of bees. And having these stone walls over here is also going to be immensely helpful because the nest of bees can shoot over these. Now, one thing that Donati could do is actually use a siege tower to take control over these walls. The gate wow. door is on the left side so it's not going to be possible for those crossbows to go through that gate no. and nope. instead b says you know what this area is a keeper as he drops his keep on the front and now he's going to extract all the stone so i think we're about to get a wall crawl like you said these siege weapons they can just sit behind the stone walls and fire away but instead they're rolling in look how quickly the nest of bees are moving Horseman riding out. Shots coming in onto the trebs instead of the crossbows. Interesting choice there. He's going to expose the nest of bees. Now, they are clocked out, so they have more health. We do still need to be careful. Palace guard. I'm going to try and burn through the gate. Shots coming out from the Maganels, but look how effective the nest of bees are. Down to half HP on that Maganel line already. Second flurry is going to come in, and that should be enough to burst two of them down. And the crossbowmen still ignore, but in a blink of an eye, they can turn around and target them next. And there it is, the splash coming out. Adi needs to back up. Damage is high. But in the meantime, the horsemen definitely get some bang for buck. They'll snipe out some more of these nest of bees. The walls are still not addressed, and B still doesn't have a way of running in with the pass guard. That was a sprinkled in the battlefield as well, and that helped so much against the nest of bees. But here come the reinforcements, oh. and Donati is losing so many crossbows in this battle. It's much more difficult for him to keep this army alive now, and B is going to have his window to rebuild those stone walls out there. That's all that he wanted to accomplish in this battle, and he did just that. Yeah, B, he just sticks, let the bodies hit the floor on maximum volume, and he doesn't care whether they're blue or red. It's just the fact that he's burning his opponent, and while doing it, keeping Ardy in the base, while B starts to extend, right? Like, this, this movement with all these villagers under the stone is the beginning of this. As this continues, B's going to keep moving out pocket ecos, and it feels like Ardy is in a perpetual state of response because his army is so slow in comparison to the speed of B's. I mean, just look at him right now. Moving across to the south side, and when you compare it, Adi is going to take him twice the time to reach the same position. 
And as you said, that is still without the Yuan Dynasty. Imagine what would happen if he got out there and he's got 5,000 gold in the bank, so he could definitely do that. Donari is now adding a couple of Springles to deal with all those Nesta Bees, but now he's facing a different problem. Uh -oh. Keeps being placed all around, unless the Mangan was far down hills over there. You gotta be careful uh, if you're B. Adi, I feel like Adi hasn't noticed. Or oh, he hasn't fought about the Maganels. They're just clipped to move down into the low ground here. So this keep is gonna be successful. Enough Palace Guard in the field to hold him back still. And there it is. It's going to be a successful drop for B. Still got four Nesta Bs to work with. Should have known the man called B would be spamming these units out in a 30-minute game. And he can just turn around in the crossbows now. And that's where Artie needs to back up. Be careful here. Springle's going to keep sniping. Elephant is going to move in. But the Palace Guard can easily clean that up. Just look at the damage they're now going to do. Especially with the system that the keep. It just bursts through this elephant so quickly. This is animal cruelty. The keep does have the hand cannon slit in placement as well. Now coming in with a spring ult too. So the Oof. firepower is immense. And it's also helping a lot against those spring ults, as you said. It's even sniping down a oh mangan ult. That is a ton of firepower coming out of that castle. Adi, it just, just, at this point, it just feels like he's clicked, gra uh, dragged everything and is backfiring quickly. I mean, he has no answer to these keeps. And meanwhile, now look on the north side what B's doing. He's going to shift in with villages, look to burn down the palisade and probably sneak in again. He's trying to drop a keep right next to Adi's primary TC. Come on. <laughs> he, he hasn't just, realized yet. He hasn't realized. <laughs> I just want to say something real quickly before that battle. There is sheep blocking the revolving for Donari up north. B is oh keeping two sheep in that chop through to prevent the enemy from placing walls over there. Oh, now, those was. sheep will be captured, but the idea is great. <laughs> However, now those sheep are stopping him from building a keep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, swings and roundabouts, my friend. It seems it's come back to backfire upon bees. He'll realize his defector sheep have betrayed him. And now his villagers are in trouble. The wall's going to be broken on purpose. And that's going to allow Artie to chase out. He's trying to quick wall, though. He's going to block them in. Bees going to get butchered. That's going to be 18 villagers down the crapper. At least they've got textiles, so they'll waste a little bit of time. And that's why B moves in on the south. He sees an opportunity here, and he strikes. Straight in. Villagers going to be forced strike. off. He's going. He needs to strike because that's a lot of villagers that's going down. And if you look at the eco counts, it's dead even. B is trying to make a run for it with those villas, but that trap was just tremendous. Being able to slaughter so many villas from B, evening out the villager count in this game. Yeah, and keep in mind, like B, it's still only one TC, right? He never extended that. So replacing them, although it's quicker at 13 seconds, it's only one TC compared to three. However, RT faces a bigger issue. He needs to get out of this base. He needs to do it soon. It's cramping his start. The problem is that B is pinning him on, on every front. The only way he could maybe go is the north, but it feels like he hasn't made a single effort to go out that way. No, not at all. And speaking of slaughter, look at the villagers at the southern part. This is something that was in the making for a long time. Not a single time before have the Minimat Arms hit the villagers at the oh bottom. Finally, the palace guards catch up with them and there is nowhere to go for Donari. Maybe he can make a run for it for its sacred site and then vow these guys in. I, the, the problem is, do you really want to, I mean, unless they allow you to build water, like roofs on these things, do you really want to stand in there when there's nest of bees coming? I, I, I don't uh, uh, know. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think you want to be part of that firework display. Instead, he's going to just run off to the northwest as far as he can. This is going to be a long journey to try and, you know, save Private Ryan in this situation because I just don't see any way out for these villages. Oh, I say that. Maybe if B is a little uh, bit blind. The Stella Forest. Look yep, at that. He, he didn't don't, see him. He lost track of them. And then look, the Lancers, the Knights, they've come out to protect their citizens. It looks like Arnie will be able to rejoin the forces. Or maybe I spoke too soon. No. B look and the bees. Look at the bees coming in. They're coming. And they're going to be seen as well. The pass guard moved through. The butchering will commence. And Arnie's about to lose a giant chunk of the citizenship that voted him in. Even the Lancers oh won't boy. last long against this. <laughs> Happy 1st of July. I don't, I don't know what to say to this. I mean, B, 93 Eco. Now Artie behind him by 10. And Artie, this might be his edge, but does he want to risk it for the biscuit? He could afford Imperial Age here. But as the Delhi, it comes with its own risk to take it. And as you said, you still have to move outside your base over here. B also launched a counterattack into the base of Donati, but that will be dealt with quite easily. But look at that force. Six Springholds, five Nesto Bees, three more Springholds out there. So oh. a combined number of nine Clock Tower Springholds. Actually, only six of them are Clock Towers. Three are standard from a Siege Workshop. Still, that's a lot of firepower to deal with Donari Springholds, keeping those Nest of Bees alive. And here's the interesting thing. It's a stalemate in Castle. They can both afford the tech up. Neither one biting just yet, though. I feel like B can more freely do it, though, right? Like, 
Delhi is a weird one. Once they hit Imperial, they don't get value out of it for another five or ten minutes. And when you're this pinned in your base, that's very risky to do. Indeed. There are some advantages being able to snap down the opponent's siege with the longer range spring holds. Bombards out there, of course, but as you said, mm -hmm. it takes some time for the Delhi to capitalize on it, whereas the Chinese could use that power spike so well. The eco balance is there for B, so if he ever wants to go up to Imperial, this would be the right time to do it. And I wonder if he's going to even place a Great Wall Gatehouse as his Ooh. landmark on one of those Stonewall sections. I mean, yeah, yep, there it is. Look there, at there you. It is. Oh, Lydic Oracle, because he's an Oracle, my friends. Look what he just predicted. It's going to be the Great Wall Gatehouse. He's not going to even hide the fact that he's taken up. He's going to let Artie stare at it in jealousy. Because Artie, he hasn't done it. He hasn't invested still. He's stuck here, and he's still looking for a way out. And because of that upgrade, because that line up being built, it's going to be even harder for him to get out. Oh, my. And yeah, yeah, he went for it. So he's got the extra materials. So now he's starting to put down these stone wall towers as well. I mean, these walls take even longer to breach and so many nest bees. And here it comes. Instantly just dead. Artie, no. Uh, I wonder if he didn't see those nest of bees behind those walls. Because there's no way that he willingly just went over there. He should know that nine nest of bees will wipe out his army in seconds. Great Wolf Gatehouse is completed. Sacred sites are also being captured by bees, so... Don Artie has a real difficult thing to address over here. He's going up to Imperial Age with oh. the Palace of the Sultan, though, so he's going to have an infinite supply of Tower of War Elephants. But does that come in in time? Well, the bigger problem is B is going to have an infinite supply of Stonewall Towers. You can see he's just starting to pin him in. They're everywhere right now. And it means that Artie is just running out of room. Even more stone walls being constructed by bees. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I start these before. They've got to be recycled. And so he's going to shift away as villagers do chase him. But it's just a staging point. More of these wall towers are going to be complete. And you're going to see that Artie, he's quickly running out of space. He's got a little bit of wiggle room left in his base at the back. But that is literally it. After that, Artie is going to be drained dry. Yeah, he has nowhere to go. Look at that. He's chopping down the trees in that stealth forest on the right side. That's a sign of desperation. And if you look at the military population, B isn't messing around. It's 105 military. On the other side, Donati has 69 military, 96 mm, nice. bills. Super nice. Well, usually, but not in this situation because they've been conscripted. They're oh, part the of the army are now. Being the damage! Oh my god! <laughs> Mess the bees! Do not mess around. It's a firework display filled with pretty lights and a lot of blood. And there will be a Zerg of villagers coming in from B as well. He doesn't care. He commits the 16 workers in the mix. So it's a mosh pit of death and it's a mosh pit of pain as Artie is going to tap this one out. And what a way to lose this one. Just immediate oppression from start to finish. B gave B uh, Artie no room to breathe whatsoever. Not at all, and we talked about the civilization selection logic here. Oftentimes you pick Delhi to counterpick the obvious selection of HRE, and I think B has shown a way how Chinese can be utilized to counterpick the Delhi, because it's so obvious what the Delhi want to do. And the way that B has played this one, he pinned Donati inside his base. Donati never had more than one sacred site to work with. And then B just capitalized on all that map control, being able to pick up the relics, being able to secure the sacred sites, control the resources, and eventually just ended up starving Donati out of resources entirely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I always wondered why B called himself B, but I think the more we've watched him in Age of Empires 4, we understand it. Just like a bee, he is incredibly annoying. And he was incredibly annoying from start to finish for the power sieve, right? The the most dominant sieve, I'd say, on Hill and Dale right now. And it just looks so trivial the way he pulled his opponent apart, just baiting him in and wasting so much of his time. It felt like Artie never had control of his game. We highlighted early on, like when you're a Delhi player and you could never get more than one sacred site, 